Hi there, welcome to my channel. So in today's topic, I will be discussing about Amazon MQ. And I will be uh, discussing about how we can utilize Apache Active MQ. So before we proceed in this topic, first of all, I would like to thank to all my subscribers. So I have reached 1000 subscribers. Thank you all for your support, continuous support. Uh, please do keep on uh, uh, share my videos and like my videos and do comment if you have any uh, like uh, facing some issues while doing those labs and all. So I'm definitely there to help you out. So before uh, moving to the lab, just I would like to show you like what is uh, Amazon MQ and why we are using and what's the reason, there, what are the other options that we have. So those things I would like to discuss. So Amazon MQ, uh, so it is a managed message broker service that helps you to like uh, easily migrate your uh, existing one, existing service to a message broker in the cloud. So it allows any software applications or any modules or any components like a communication between them or operating system or any formal messaging or any, some logs or anything, something uh, like you want to uh, deliver in the form of message, you can utilize this. And it supports, Amazon MQ supports both Apache MQ, Active MQ and Rabbit MQ. But in today's lab, I'll be just showing you about the Active MQ. So, okay, so you can see it, it works with our existing applications without uh, needing to move to somewhere else. Or basically we are maintaining our own messaging system. So there's few uh, pros and cons also, like uh, you need to maintain the servers, their uh, scaling and all those things you need to maintain yourself. So uh, you might be thinking, why not SQS and SNS? So basically for the existing ones, we use the MQ, but for the uh, new ones, like we can utilize SQS, in, uh, this Amazon queuing system and notification services. So that are highly scalable and uh, managed by AWS itself. So we need not to set up any brokers and all. We need not to take care of the you know the base of the uh, like uh, service says and all. So just we need to uh, utilize the service. So Amazon will take care of all those things uh, related to scaling and everything. So we can. Uh, like have unlimited scalability using this. Uh, and we can have like a simple APIs also we can utilize for this SQS and SNS. So let's uh, proceed on to the lab session. So First of all, we have to set up a message broker. So I'll just go to the Amazon MQ. You can just have a quick review over here about the message broker. Like uh, we have a fully managed service for open source message broker. And we have 750 hours of Amazon MQ per month for the 12 months, migrate your applications. So this is a cloud broker, message broker, so that you can utilize it. And it is different. You can utilize it. Just a second, I think some issues are there. Let me. So uh, we can have this a managed uh, message broker. We can, as I said, we can have a active MQ and rabbit MQ. So this is just a simple working shown over here. We have manage your message broker on AWS, create an active MQ or rabbit MQ message broker. Then this is the compute that will be there. So we have that ECS containers will be there. Then connect your producers and consumers also we can have it. And then we can have a communication between the systems with high throughput and low latency messaging. So that's the benefit of using uh, this MQ. So these are some use cases like when you're migrating with flexible configuration, you can also invoke it with a AWS Lambda function also. We can also conduct a poll like in case of like, you know, SQS and all, 
uh, you can do the polling in order to collect the messages and process those messages and all. So you can also have some dead queues. Lots of things are there that you can configure it. So first of all, let's set up a message broker. So it will take some time in order to get active. So let's go to the console, Amazon MQ over here. So get started. So I'll be using active MQ. Next. So uh, in, we have a standby and active broker, like we can have uh, for high visibility and automatic failover capability, we can choose this, but I'm just showing a demo. So I'll just go ahead with a single instance broker. So let's say it's a durability. I don't want to like focus on the throughput optimized and all. So for the sample blueprint networks, nothing to be chosen over here, let it be default. And then click next. So I will just put my broker name, my broker JAS. And here you can choose MQ, T2 micro, feature, eligible. Don't take a bigger instance. Okay, simple authentication. We can also have a LDAP authentication, but I'll just go ahead with a simple authentication, username. I'll just put it over here. Paul and password. Okay. Rest, let it be default, just click next. Uh oh, it should be 12 to 250 characters long. Okay, let me put something, a bigger one. Still at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can change this password whenever you want. Let me show you the password also. Because same password, we have to utilize it in our code. Okay, that's okay. You can set it up any easy one just for the demo purpose. Okay, that's all. So you can see estimated deployment time is 20 minutes. So I'll just take a break and I will just come back once it is up this broker services up. Okay, now you can see it take almost like 10 to 15 minutes to start the service. So you can see my broker service is running. I will just click on it. So I just, I'll just show you the, what are the things that are being included over here. So you can see broker status running over here, ARN. This is the name of the configuration, VPC and the subnet. I'll just go to the, uh, subnet because we need to add some inbound rules. And this is a T2 micro and the version and all everything is mentioned over here and the public IP. So if somebody is using C sharp or not, different different ways of writing the code are there, we can just utilize that. And we can have the SDKs or the jar files added in order to utilize it. The most important thing is that we are using this open wire and this is a web URL in order to access the active MQ. So we will go to that one later on, but uh, we need to copy this uh, open wire endpoints. So this is the uh, example given over here by Amazon itself. So you can see we can start a Java project and add this basically a normal uh, Java project and you can uh, Maven project and you can add this form.xml and these are the dependencies. So once you build it, it will automatically get installed. And this is your uh, Java code. So you need to add this code. So I've just added to my NetBeans over here. So you can see, I need to change this. And let me copy paste the new endpoint. Now we need to make it show in the security group, we allow this inbound rule for this port. So I will just go to the security group. Let's check the inbound rule. What are the inbound rules? So let's go to the security group. So we can click on it. And you can see by default it has added. So we did not to add anything. 
uh, custom TCP. Uh, you can just go to the edit inbound rule. And this is, otherwise you need to add it to yourself. So it is already added. Any IP on this port, they can access. So it's by default added, so we do not have to worry about it. But in the older versions, we need to add it manually and all, but now it is being automatically added. So no need to worry. If it is not added, just we need to make it sure 61617 and 8162, this port, uh, this we need to allow this port in order to access it publicly. Okay, that's all in the security group, nothing to change. So the only thing that we have to make sure we are adding the correct endpoint. And this is the username and the password. And this is like a static wide domain in which we are calling the active MQ uh, connection factory. It is making a connection, then connected after the connection, it is sending a message and it is receiving a message. So this are the two things it is performing. So I will just run this one. Uh, you, I will just put it in my GitHub, this whole code, or you can just copy paste. Uh, but I think better I will put it as a whole project. So you can just uh, utilize it without making any changes. Just make it sure you have you have to change your endpoint and just the username and password. The rest of the things you can keep it same, there is no change. So I will just run it as a Java application. Okay. Okay. Uh oh, I think I, I just need to run this one. I ran the wrong one. I think it is done. So you can see the message sent, uh, received message. So you'll be getting this thing. So message is being sent into the broker and it is being received. So both the functionalities are written. You can run it separate, separate, and you can check it yourself. Like you can have one time you run the, for sending the message and then it will remain in the queue over there and you can just write a message to receive it also. So here, uh, just both are happening at the same time. Now, uh, this is the code, I'll just put it in my GitHub so you can utilize this. So let's go to the, uh, go back to our MQ. Let's, I will just show you the web interface that we have. So let's go to this broker over here. And this is the web console. So manage active MQ broker. So we can put it here. We can use the name. I hope I entered the correct password. Okay. So you can see, welcome to this, my broker name, my version and all. You can just go to the queues over here. Little bit slow. So you can see, uh, okay, that the connection and all. Actually, I clicked on the topic and also you can just click on the queues. So you can see number of consumers, zero, zero, message and queued one, message dequeued one. So that's all, that's how, that's how it is. And you can have the topics created over here. You can create the topic, then you can have the subscribers over here to whom the message is to be sent, client ID and all those things. So these things you, have, you can manage over here. So I just showed you a simple example how we can work with the, this Amazon AWS MQ, how does it supports this uh, active MQ. So I will be putting all the details. So, but make it sure once you uh, finish running this demo, make it sure you uh, destroy the resources that we have, you delete the broker, otherwise you'll be charged for this. But I think that 750 hours are free. You can keep it running for a few days if you want to uh, check a few things, otherwise you can just remove it. And you can see the underlying resources that are being uh, spin up over here. So you can see instance type. If you go to the EC2, let's see what's there, if something is there or not.
let me just go back to my broker over here. Okay, I think it's there. So basically it has run the G S. We can click on the other side and we can go, we can go into the details over here. It's just showing storage type, elastic file system, broker instance. These are the details. Okay, nothing is mentioned over here. It is maintaining itself the security groups and all. So it's just showing you the version and the VPC details and the revision you can see over here. Configuration is given over here. So uh, it is a single instance broker, uh, broker type, everything is mentioned over here. So this that's all about this uh, active MQ. So once you are done with it, you just uh, go to the delete broker and just write the name, my broker JS. So this is how you can do it. It will take some time to delete it, delete all the resources that it has spent up, but it wanted to delete the security group and all. If you're having extra bunch of security groups listed over here, try to delete as once you finish up the lab, so it won't be that much crowded in the security groups. Okay, so that was all from my side related to this broker service. I will uh, definitely put the source code uh, in my GitHub in the video description. I will provide you all the links and all how you can utilize it. This uh, AWS MQ and how to utilize it, and just a demo like how to send and receive your message. You can uh, book up the little bit of the uh, the source code in two parts. So you can run one at a time in order to send the message, take some duration, let it, you can check your uh, AWS MQ, whether the message is there in the queue or not. Then uh, the subscriber should uh, like, you know, from the queue, it should receive the message. So you can split it up, the whole application. And you can have the topics created, subscribers created. You can give a try on it. If you face any difficulties, uh, do let me know. So I will just look into it. So I hope you enjoyed my video. Please do like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.